us happy to be in God's presence. If you have a good Bible, let's open our Bibles briefly to the book of John chapter 20, verse 1 to 6. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They've taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together. And the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for the entrance of your word that's got the power to transform our lives and destinies. I pray that as the word comes, let it come to take your people to higher ground and let God's people say, Amen. I've titled today's message, Race of Destiny. Every believer was commanded to run the race of destiny so as to establish God's kingdom on earth. Failure to pursue your purpose would amount to disobedience. To achieve victory in this race, you must run with a plan, purpose, power, passion, patience, prayer, principles, and people. You must understand that you were called to run a race whose outcome is already known by God. And to understand this, you must have a prophetic insight of your destiny. No wonder the psalmist made a profound statement saying, Lo, I came to do that which was written concerning me in the volume of books. For every one of us, there's something that God has written concerning you. It is your obligation, it is your duty to look out and find out that thing that God has written concerning you. No one was born without an assignment. And it is your duty to find out your purpose on this planet. You need to ask yourself these questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? Who created me? Why am I here? What are my giftings and talents? And when I leave this planet, where am I going? Failure to understand these questions is going to leave your life in one hell of confusion. The day you got saved, everything about your life was changed. You turned your back against the kingdom of darkness. You were enlisted into the Lord's army to pursue righteousness. That's why the Bible tells me that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away and everything becomes new. That means the way you think, the way you talk, the way you act becomes different. Because of the power of God in you, for you, through you. The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. God is with us. That is the meaning of the name Emmanuel. And every disciple, every believer has an assignment. And this assignment is to run the race of destiny and recruit others to join in the race of destiny. And one way to do that is to make disciples of all nations. There's nothing in your DNA that suggests that you're going to end up as a local believer or a local preacher. You may stand as a local preacher, but the aim of the gospel is never local but global. 
So for those people who say, we want to stop borders, we want to shut borders, it makes no sense. If people are qualified to come to your nations and they meet the right requirement, allow them to go. Because going to nations of the world is part of God's destiny plan for mankind. And shutting down borders restricts the flow of the gospel. We are global ambassadors. We are born of God and born of the Spirit. And so God has given us an assignment to disciple the nations. Evangelism is just a means to an end. Discipleship is the goal. You have seen nations of the world and societies of the world going astray and you complaining. You don't need to complain. Protesting or complaining or engaging in all manner of social activism is not how the gospel is preached. Criticizing the wrongdoings of other people and giving them name tags is not how we disciple nations. Tell them about the love of God. Tell them about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Tell them about how Christ loved them and gave himself for them. That's when their hearts are going to be opened up for the gospel. And when you get them saved, you also need to teach them to observe the ordinance of God. That is how society is transformed. We move from glory to glory, from power to power, from strength to strength. The church must never play the antagonistic role. We have a ministry of reconciliation. It's our duty to reconcile conservative groups and liberal groups. But we, although we have an assignment, although we have responsibility of casting our vote, but we can never be partisan. Because if you're a partisan preacher, you're going to turn your pulpit into a battlefield of political ideas. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to propagate the gospel. Because politicians can be wrong. Political ideologies can be wrong. But the word of God can never and is never wrong. Because God is perfect and is infinitely perfect. No one can surpass his wisdom. The Bible tells me in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. We can never obtain spiritual prizes by running a political race. The gospel is spiritual. And when we run the race of destiny, it should be devoid of politics. That which is spirit is spirit and that which is flesh is flesh. We can't come with the wisdom of men and try to corrupt the gospel. And so for my brothers and sisters out there, it is time for you to function as a nation of kings and priests. There are three types of runners. One, visionary runners who carry others along. Two, Fast runners who inspire others to do the same. Three, slow runners who drag others down. You can't run the race triumphantly without seeking God. That's how you develop his strength, wisdom, and character. But as you run this race of destiny, you have to be careful about who you carry along. You have to drop everything that's ungodly. You have to drop everything that's unscriptural. You need to drop everything that has to do with flesh. And above all, you need to die to self. As you run this race of destiny, run from people who talk politics rather than God. As you run the race of destiny, run from people who turn their pulpits into a battlefield of political ideas rather than a place where the word of God comes undiluted. Run. Run from people who call black, white, and white, black. Run from people who twist the truth. Run from those who seek self-serving interests rather than God's kingdom agenda. Run from those who think immorality is a good thing. 
Run from those who cast the vision and strive. Run from those who make a mockery of the faith. Run from those who turn the, the gospel into a business venture just to make money rather than to win souls. Run. Run from the immoral men and women who drag you down by telling you and doing things or suggesting things that will drag down your spiritual lifestyle and drag you into the abyss. Run from such people. Run towards people who can open the windows of heaven by the righteousness they carry through obedience. Run from those who do not acknowledge the deity of Christ. Run from those who claim to know everything yet they know nothing. Run. Run towards those who love Jesus, who are sold out to the faith. And above all, run towards people who know how to seek the face of God. Because when you seek the face of God, you understand his will better. And the race becomes much more easier. The Bible tells me in the book of Amos chapter 5 verse 4. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, seek me and live. Do you want to live? Seek God. Do you want your marriage to succeed? Seek God. Do you want your business to succeed? Seek God. Do you want to leave a lasting legacy in this race? Seek God. Only those who seek God from a sincere heart will excel in this race. You cannot achieve this by religious practices and traditions. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 63, verse 1 to 2. Oh God, you my God, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. When you seek God sincerely, not only are you going to get his power, you are going to be exposed to God's glory. But there is a difference between the power of God and the glory of God. The power of God tells you because the Bible tells me that the kingdom... 1 Corinthians 4.20, the kingdom of God is not in words but in power. The power of God simply means that God is with us. His presence is with us. But the glory of God reveals the nature of God. You can experience the power of God and still be the same, but you can never experience the glory of God without being like God. And the ultimate dream of every believer is to be like God. Paul said that I may know him better and the power of his resurrection. That I may know him. That should be your heart cry desire. That should be your prayer. That God, I want to know you. I want to know the power of your countenance. I want to know your will. I want to know the totality of your life. God, I want to know you. I want to be like you. I want to think like you. I want to talk like you. I want to become like you. I want to have your wisdom in place of my foolishness. Give me your wisdom. In place of my stupidity, give me your wisdom. In place of my ignorance, give me your knowledge. In place of flesh, give me your spirit. Lord, I want to be like you. John chapter 4 verse 23 tells me, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. It makes no sense if you say you're a spiritual person yet you don't like the truth. That's why many believers are finding it difficult. You say you know God, but you hate the truth concerning his righteousness. You hate the truth concerning his love. You hate the truth, especially when the truth is an indictment on your character. When the truth is an indictment on your behavior. God cannot change for us. We need to change for him. Galatians 5, 7. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Paul was speaking to the Galatians. He said, you ran the race well. You've run well. But who bewitched you? Who gave you doctrines that were contrary to the gospel? Who gave you doctrines that were contrary to the truth? We are living in the 21st century where all manner of doctrines are, are flying all over the place. Don't be bewitched. Don't be hindered. Anything that's not coming from the throne room of God will drag you down, will stop you. 
Stand for the truth. God is not an author of confusion. Be passionate about God. Love God with all your heart, soul, and might. And be desperate for him as a dear craze for water. If you want to succeed in your highest aspiration, you must follow God aggressively. You can't follow God passively. You can't follow God in stupor. You can't follow God reluctantly. You must follow him aggressively. Let him be your breath. Let him be your thought. Let him be your all. The Bible tells me in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Do you love him? Psalm 42 verse 1 to 2 tells me, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This is a prayer of every desperate believer who wants to be like God. Let God be your life. Let him be the essence of your destiny. Let him be the center of your life, your emotions. Let everything you have, your breath, glorify him. Psalm 63, verse 8. For my soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. Another translation puts it this way. My soul strives hard after you. Pursue God. In the race of destiny, winners don't quit and quitters don't win. The Bible didn't tell me that the, the road is going to be easy. The Bible didn't tell me that the race is going to be easy. The Christian race is not the easiest of race. The Christian path is not the easiest route, but it is the surest route. Sometimes, the very people who ought to understand you, we criticize you. Sometimes, the very people you thought you knew will be the ones to put you down. Sometimes, the one you looked up to the ones you had high regards for, we put you down. But do not allow that to stop you. Because it is a race that you have to finish. The Bible tells me that every one of us will give an account of himself before God. You came to this planet alone and you're going alone to stand before God. In the race of destiny, don't allow the criticism of the critics to drag you down. Neither should you allow the praises of the psychophants to stop you. In the race of destiny, you must possess the nature of a lion and a lamb. Because Jesus was both a lion and a lamb. A lamb cannot survive in a jungle. And a lion can create a lot of instability among lambs. Know when to fight and know when to pray. There's a time for everything. There's a time for you to be moderate. There's a time for you to be outspoken. There's a time for you to be silent. There's a time for you to talk. Your destiny is in the hands of God. He called you. He fashioned you. He created you. Some of you are so crazy about the approval of men. This is going to stop you. I'm not saying you should be nasty, but even if people acknowledge what you're doing, never mind. Just move on. If they praise you, praise God. If they don't, praise God. If they criticize you, praise God. But you must never lose sight of the race. You can't run this race and win this race by holding hands with the past. You can't become successful and become a champion in this race running with unforgiveness and, and bitterness. You can't become successful in this race by, by being proud and arrogant. Run with passion. Be humble. 
Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. You can't say you want to stand before God's presence by walking in the path of unrighteous people. That's what the Bible tells me. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, not sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In the law of God, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers that shall bring forth his fruit in his season, and whatever he does prospers. Please, identify with godly friends and run with godly friends. Wrong with people who carry the spirit of excellence. Wrong with people who carry the spirit of wisdom. Wrong with people who carry the spirit of revelation. Wrong with people who carry the spirit of reverence for God. Run from those who will stop you. Run from those who will put you down. Run from those who do not fear God. Run from those who mock God and the process of righteousness. Righteousness is real. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Do not allow people to stop you. In the race of destiny, people are going to throw bricks at you sometimes. They'll throw stones at you. But learn how to use the stones of shame thrown at you to build the path of destiny. Wise runners know how to use the pebbles and stones of criticisms to build staircases to their palaces. Seek God. Be passionate. Run with purpose. In the race of destiny, you will encounter many obstacles and trials. But with persistence, you will overcome every resistance. Adversity creates the audacity of faith. The seed of discipline is bitter, but the fruit is sweet. The Bible tells me in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Don't run away from discipline. Embrace it. There is no one who wants to win that won't train himself for the prize. Discipline is essential to finishing the race. And this discipline must be spiritual, mental, and physical. Spiritual discipline gives birth to mental discipline. And mental discipline cements physical discipline and victory. Romans chapter 8 verse 13. If you live according to the flesh, you'll die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The question is, do you want to leave? So why do you get angry when they tell you to discipline yourself spiritually, mentally, and physically? Acts chapter 14, verse 22. We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not for the weak. It's for those who know their God. Those who can fight. Those who don't say no to righteousness. Those who have the audacity of faith to say no to unrighteousness. Those who say no to failure. Those who say no to indiscipline. The kingdom of God is for those who are forceful and persistent. People who never give up. The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. 
And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. I prophesy that someone under the influence of the sound of my voice is going to take back his marriage by force. You're going to take back your business by force. You're going to take back your falling prayer life by force. I prophesy that someone under the influence of the sound of my voice, maybe your business has gone down, but I declare that by the mystery of spiritual aggression, you're coming back up, you're coming out from your darkness, you're coming out from your shame, you're coming out from your indignity, and you're stepping into God's purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy that someone under the influence of the sound of my voice, through the power of resurrection, you are coming back to life. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. From our original text, the Bible tells me that Mary initiated the race. And Mary told them that we can find the body of Jesus. So Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved started the race. Along the way, Peter was running. But the disciple of Jesus, the one that Jesus loved, outran Peter. Peter loved Jesus. So he ran the race. If you want to become a champion in this race, you must go beyond loving Jesus. You must make Jesus the essence of your being. Talking about this disciple that Jesus loved, there was a time he placed his head at the breast of Jesus. The implication is he, he strategically positioned himself where he could feel the heartbeat of Jesus. You cannot place yourself in a place where you know the heartbeat of Jesus and not excel in this race. You can't place yourself in a strategic position where you understand the heartbeat and you know the will of God without running excellently. You want to run well? Know the will of God. You want to run well? Learn to hear the voice of God. You want to run well? Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Because the Bible tells me that how between the Spirit of truth comes. It's going to teach you all things. It's going to teach you how to run. It's going to teach you why you should run. It's going to teach you how to get to the place and get there on time. It's going to teach you how to do your church project. It's going to teach you how to have the right spouse. It's going to teach you the right business to do. It's going to teach you how to run in a political race and excel. It's going to teach you all things. Lean not on your own understanding. When the Spirit of God comes, He will take you from glory to glory, from power to power, from strength to strength, from honor to honor. If there is someone struggling right now, this is the time for you to strategically position yourself so that you can allow the Spirit of God to lead you. It's going to lead you into all truth. It's going to lead you into righteousness. It's going to help you to pray because the Bible tells me that he that prays in the Spirit, when the Spirit of God takes over your prayer, is going to teach you how to pray in line with the will of God. It's going to teach you plans that you've never seen before. There are houses you've never seen before. It's going to teach you how to build them. There are cars you've never developed before. It's going to teach you how to develop and make new inventions. It's going to teach you how to be the head and not the Taylor. Is there someone in this place under the influence of the sound of my voice? If you can die to yourself and become alive in Christ, my God will take you out of darkness. My God will take you out of shame. My God will take you out of indignity. The way he took Esther out of bondage and made Esther a queen. The way he took Daniel out of captivity and made Daniel a prime minister. The way he took Joseph out of prison and and made him a prime minister. My God can do it for you. If he did it for Solomon, he can do it for you. If he did it for David, he can do it for you. It was not the might of David that helped him to kill Goliath in the race of destiny. It was by the Spirit. It was not the wisdom of Solomon that gave him the audacity, gave him the right to do all the great things he did. It was by the Spirit of God. Through the Spirit of God, my God, we help you how to create wealth and take you out of poverty. If there's someone in this place under the influence of the sound of my voice, give your neighbor a high five and say, this is my time. We are coming out. We are coming out. We may pass through the tribulations, but the Bible tells me that if God be for us, who can be against us? You may 
you pass through the waters, but don't be afraid as you pour on the race of destiny. You may pass through the waters, but do not be afraid. When you get to the water, it, you shall not be drowned. When you get to the fire, it shall not consume you. My God, if he stopped the mouth of lions for Daniel, he'll do the same for you. If he stopped the mouth of the evil one because of Daniel, he will do the same. He showed up in the midst of the fire among the three Hebrew boys. He showed up. You can't carry the fire of God and be consumed by the fire of adversity. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. That no one should be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. Tell your neighbor, say, we can do this. We were appointed for such a time as this. In the race of destiny, we must learn how to carry our cross. What is that cross? Don't drop the cross. Get the cross across to the finish line. The cross represents the blessed hope and victory that awaits us while the baton must be passed to the next generation for spiritual posterity. Simon of Cyrene carried the cross of Jesus to symbolize the assignment of all believers on earth. Moses handed over his mantle to Joshua. Elijah did the same to Elisha while Peter groomed for ministry. Whom have you groomed to take your place? Whom have you groomed to take your place? Your passion for Jesus will inspire you to run faster than others and take you to the finish line. Never rely on your own ability. Look up to Jesus. Weariness and discouragement are the dividends of running in the flesh. The natural is no match for the supernatural. The Bible tells me in the book of Philippians 3, 14, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Keep pressing. Even if you don't feel like moving, keep moving. Even if you don't feel like or think like doing it, keep doing it because winners don't quit. 1 Kings 18, 46. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Elijah had just finished exploits in the Lord. There was problem in the land. And Elijah prophesied that there was going to be an abundance of rain. And before he could finish the meeting, the rain began to fall. The heaven opened up and there was sign of rain. He had done great things for Ahab, but Ahab could not even give him a ride. He had done great things for the nation of Israel, but no one made plans to get the prophet a vehicle to take him to its destination. You know, the path of righteousness is often lonely. You can do all manner of things that can benefit nations, but sometimes nobody pauses to say praise God or even to acknowledge the servant of God. They talk about the miracles of God's prophets. They talk about the prophecies of God's prophet. But how many people take time out to say let's honor the servants of God? But well, thank God that God has not left us at the hands and at the mercy of ordinary people. Thank God he didn't leave us at the mercy of the great and powerful. Because Ahab, as soon as the program was done, he entered his chariots and left Elijah. But the Bible tells me that and the hand of God came upon Elijah. And Elijah, who didn't have chariots, began to... 
to run. And when he ran, he overtook the chariots of Ahab. I don't know what you have been through. Maybe you have been a late bloomer. Maybe you are just one of those who started the race late and you think that there's no way I can cover up ground. But I have good news for you that if God be for you, no one can be against you. If it's by God's spirit, if it's God, by God's power, you will overtake all those who run ahead of you. I prophesy that you may have been late in your business. You may have been late to get married. You may have been late in many things, but when the hand of God comes upon you, you will overcome those who went ahead of you. You will multiply your business. You will multiply your ministry. Maybe your ministry is so small right now, but I'm prophesying that God's spirit, God's hand is coming upon you. When the hand of God comes upon you, when people, the hand of God comes upon you, ordinary men will see it. Us sorcerers will see it. Charlatans will see it. All manner of people will see it. Our my God, when the hand of God came upon Moses and he began to do miracles, even the sorcerers of Egypt acknowledged that something was happening. They said, this must be the finger of God. When the hand of God came upon the king of the heathen, when the hand of God came upon him and he wrote something on the wall, that day, that king that made a mockery of God's kingdom, his reign was cut short. The hand of God is coming upon you to lift you up. The hand of God God is coming upon you to take you to the finish line. The hand of God is coming upon you to make sure that your business survives. The hand of God is coming upon the Philippines because the prophet of God looked at the dry bones and he was wondering if the dry bones could leave. And God spoke. He said, man of God. He said, prophesy to the bones. I came this Lord's day to prophesy to the nations in Asia. I came this day to prophesy to the nations in Africa. I came this day to prophesy to the nations of Europe. I came this day to prophesy to North America and South America and Antarctica and Australia that the wind of God is moving. The wind of God is flowing. The power of God is moving. I put an end to premature death. I put an end to premature sickness. I put an end to bondage. Everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice, listen to the word of God. My God God sent me to prophesy life. My God sent me to prophesy goodness. My God sent me to prophesy betterment. My God sent me to prophesy goodness. My God sent me to prophesy that normalcy is coming back to the Republic of the Philippines, to Nigeria, to America, to Israel, to Jerusalem. Normalcy is coming back to nations of the world. I prophesy that this virus you have been defeated today because the spirit of God, we outrun the power of death. The spirit of life, we replace the spirit of death. The spirit of life is coming. It's going to run faster than the spirit of death to overcome every sickness, to overcome every poverty. I declare that victory is coming from the north, east, west, and south. I prophesy that this is your time in this race of destiny. Maybe you have been overtaken by the race of poverty. Maybe the spirit of poverty has overtaken you. Maybe the spirit of immorality has overtaken you. Maybe the spirit of bitterness has overtaken you. But I speak by the spirit of God that today you will overcome your limitations by running faster than them. You will overcome problems. You will overcome challenges. You will overcome everything that is meant to stop you. Arise and shine. For the spirit of God is risen upon you. In conclusion, two men ran. One ran faster than the other. The disciple that Jesus loved ran faster than Peter. But they got to the same destination. Heaven is the goal. You may not run the way you want to run. You may have said, I didn't run the way I ought to have run. Make sure you finish the race. You may be a fast runner according to God's grace in your life. You may be a slow runner. Or you may be an average runner. Don't quit running. Keep running. A wise man once said, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, Walk. 
If you can't walk, crawl. But by God's sake, don't stop moving. Don't stop moving. Because you were not called to be stagnant. The Spirit of God is never stagnant. Wherever you are, just lift up those hands and let me pray for you. Lord, I pray for your sons and daughters. I pray that the Spirit of goodness and mercy will follow them. That they will move from glory to glory. That in the race of destiny, they will finish strong. That they will overcome everything that has challenged them. That the spirit of goodness and mercy, revelation and power will be upon them. Those who are sick, I declare healing for them. Those who are broke, I declare a miracle for them. Those who are downcast, I release the spirit of joy upon them. If you're watching me out there and you say, I want to walk with God. I want to become part of this glorious race. Then you can say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you're the son of God and you died for me. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from my trespasses. With my heart, I have believed you. And with my mouth, I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying for me. If you've prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the race of destiny. No one loses in this race. And heaven is our goal. Welcome. God bless you.